Hi guys, so this is going to be my competitive programming journey video. I know that people have been asking for it since uh, in the last one year, but finally I'm going to make this because I don't want to lose the opportunity of titling it like how I became India rank one on code forces so because yeah, uh, right now I am India rank one on code forces. Uh, just became that yesterday. I will be telling how that happened. So yeah, uh, let's begin. So uh, first question is how I learned programming in the in the first place. So I learned programming because uh, a I was like really interested in knowing how things work. So uh, I remember when I was like uh, 11 years old or something, I wanted to know how websites are made. So I googled it and I got to know that uh, HTML codes are used to do that. And I learned those and then I learned CSS and JavaScript as well. And I even made some games using HTML. So I mean, that wasn't much of an experience, but for a 11 to 12 year old kid, I think 13 or 14 maybe. So for a kid that young, it was a big thing. And uh, apart from this, I also learned Java in my school curriculum. So that was also pretty much beginner level, but uh, I performed really well in that because of, because of how interested I was. So uh, in both of my class 10th and class 12th boards, I had hundred marks in uh, computer science and engine computer science. So yeah. So after that, when I came to college, I knew that I had to do something in programming because I was like really interested in it. And at this time, I didn't even know that the branches really bifurcate like that, that uh, like if you're good at artificial intelligence, you might not be good at software engineering or something. So I didn't know all this, but I knew that I had to do something in competitive, something in programming in general. So I got to hear from a senior that uh, he was telling the juniors that you all should try competitive programming. It would be really good for you. So I thought, yeah, maybe I should try this because this is something to do with programming. So I asked him, I texted, texted him on WhatsApp, how can I start competitive programming, what it is. So he just gave me a link to the hacker rank problem set and he said, yeah, try solving these problems. And that's it. He didn't uh, say anything else. So, uh, and I also didn't ask uh, a lot of uh, dumb questions like, okay, after this, what will I do? And then what will I do one month later? How, in how much time will I be able to complete it? I was just, uh, I was just interested in it. So I just wanted to see what the problems are like. And I took it up like a challenge. Let's see if I can solve those or not. So they, so they were actually easier than my school level. So obviously I was able to solve them, but uh, as I move forward, uh, the level kept on increasing. And yeah, so did I tell you that I didn't have a laptop back then? So uh, when I went to college in the first place, I didn't have, uh, like during the initial days, I didn't have a laptop. So I actually coded on this phone, uh, this Moto G4, and I had this uh, app called the online compiler. Uh, let me show it to you. So I had this online compiler app on which I used to write Java codes. So yeah, uh, that's how I began my programming, my competitive programming journey. And the hackering problem problem set was not very good, but it was like really good for beginners uh, because like if you don't know anything, you would want to start off with the easy problems. But a few days later, after I had solved around 40 to 50 problems, I think maybe 60, a uh, few days later, I saw my friends solving the A2OJ problem set and like two of them were doing it. So I was like, uh, I felt FOMO and I thought I should also do it. So I started doing that as well. And A2OG ladders are actually really good. They are uh, five different ladders. I mean, there are a lot of different ladders uh, assorted uh, with the difficulty level like A, B, C, D, E, etc. So I started with the A level. And uh, yeah, so each ladder consists of 100 problems in increasing difficulties. So I so solved them one by one. And the fact that I was doing all this on my phone, um, made it really easy, easy and enjoyable for me because like uh, uh, I didn't have to stay stuck in a room while doing it. I can just uh, sit on the railing of the balcony or on the stairs or on the ground or anywhere, uh, take a lot of fresh air and keep on solving some problems on my phone. So yeah, so that was really enjoyable um, and like not very lonely. I don't know. So yeah, so that's how, uh, that's how I began the initial part of my journey. And I had solved at least 200 problems after which I brought, I bought my laptop and I did my first code forces contest. So I, so since I already had like 200 problems of experience, I was able to perform well in my first contest itself. I was able to solve three problems in my first contest and my rating increased in the first contest, which is not very uncommon, but yeah, kind of uncommon. So yeah, my rating increased in the first contest itself. And yeah, so I uh, kept on uh, solving these problems for practice 
and uh, I attended one or two college workshops where they taught me about C++ HTML, which is like uh, really useful for uh, competitive programming. So using those techniques that I learned and uh, all of this uh, practice that I had done, I was able to reach uh, expert level in around one to two months. And uh, that was that was really good because I was really happy that day. I remember I had posted a status on uh, my WhatsApp uh, with the caption, you know that you are an expert in programming when you become one on code forces. So yeah, something like that I had posted. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, I was always like that. I used to uh, brag about my achievements a lot. And you'll see later how that helps. Uh, yeah, so I think I think I would recommend bragging. Uh, it really helps you to uh, be better because like if you are not having new achievements, uh, you cannot brag a lot. So yeah, uh, I think if you want to get ahead in life, maybe you should start bragging. So uh, after that, uh, I kept on learning a few more things, mainly by solving problems. So it was more enjoyable for me because I didn't have any syllabus. I was not preparing for anything. I was just doing it for fun. So it's not like I have a list of articles and I'm like, okay, I have to read them by the end of the week or something. I'm just solving problems. And whenever I get stuck on a problem uh, and I feel like it uses some concept that I don't know about. So I just used to learn about that concept. And that's how I learned most of the things uh, in the initial phase. And uh, apart from this, when I used to get stuck on a problem, I also used to take help by uh, seeing somebody else's code. Uh, I didn't know about editorials back then. Like I didn't know that you can see the solution for a problem. I just used to read other people's code and try to figure out what they're doing. Uh, sometimes I've even asked some people, what are you doing in this code? Uh, but usually they don't reply because uh, uh, newbie doubts are really newbie. So they kind of ignore. Uh, but yeah, so that way I, uh, that, that was my initial few days uh, of the journey. And uh, I also did one thing like when I was uh, doing contests and uh, if I used to get stuck at some sub problem, like I know that there is a problem about strings and I know that we have to find a substring in a string. So I have solved till this much, but I don't know how to do this part quickly. So during this, what I used to do is I used to just search this on Google during the contest and find maybe like a geeks for geeks article or something describing exactly that. And I used to just copy paste the code and get it done. So instead of trying to understand how it works. I just focus on understanding what it does so that I can kind of copy paste and use it. So that's how I think a lot of programmers do stuff. You know, uh, you must have seen those memes, like just copy something from Stack Overflow. So yeah, in CP Stack Overflow doesn't help that one, but there are other uh, resources like CP algorithms or uh, Geeks for Geeks, etc. So yeah, so I did a lot of things that way. I didn't really bother to learn it that much. Like I know I had used segment trees a lot of times, but I didn't really know how to, uh, how those worked. So yeah, after that, um, in uh, the, like by the time four or five months had passed, uh, because I had already done a lot of practice and I had also learned a lot of things. I was able to reach the purple level on code forces, which is candidate master. It was, I think, top 200 in India, top 150 in India, maybe uh, at that time. So yeah, so that was also a very good thing. I used to be very proud of it. And, uh, uh, but one bad thing happened. It was that I was already um, better than everyone else in my batch. And I was also better than everyone in my uh, one year senior, uh, one, one senior year of uh, college. So uh, at this point, I kind of felt like I am wasting all my effort because if I do better, uh, I will still be the best in my batch and like, like you cannot go above number one. Right. So that's why I, I actually quit CP at that point. And a lot of people ask me uh, why is there this uh, huge, this long gap in my uh, rating graph. So that's because I had quit at that point. Uh, but anyway, um, that didn't last for long because uh, I mean, when I quit, I just uh, joined some clubs and uh, roamed around in the city or something. So I didn't really enjoy it that much. I mean, I did enjoy it, but I think I enjoyed CP more. So I started doing it again, but I wasn't that serious. I wasn't that dedicated. So I wasn't improving much. And a friend was actually catching up very quickly and he, he eventually surpassed me. So he reached the orange level before me. And uh, remember how I told that I used to brag a lot. So because of that, when a friend reached the level, reached the new level before me, uh, there were a lot of people who used to make fun of me, mainly my friends, because uh, like they used to make fun of me, like you're not the first one to reach the orange level in the batch. So yeah, so that actually motivated, motivated me a lot because now I had someone to beat 
and uh, yeah so then i started practicing a lot more and i uh, started reading a lot of stuff because uh, uh, i realized that uh, even though i do well in contest i didn't have much knowledge about a lot of algorithms and data structures so i read a lot of articles from cp algorithms i read a lot of articles from all over the internet uh, I, i learned a lot of techniques a lot of them are not even used that often but uh, still i learned a lot of things and i also uh, practiced a lot of problems so uh, i mean my uh, knowledge and my problem solving skills had increased a lot by this time and uh, eventually i also reached uh, the orange level after which this pandemic started and this pandemic is the this pandemic is when i actually improved exponentially so when this pandemic began um there wasn't much i could do like i was just stuck at home and there wasn't much that i could do all day so i just dedicated most of my time uh, towards competitive programming but um yeah so uh, for competitive programming i was already at the orange level and uh, there wasn't much scope for me to uh, learn and improve because i already knew a lot of those things that were used in contest so i was just practicing and the strategy i was using for practicing was like i used to pick a certain difficulty i used to solve 100 problems of that difficulty and i then used to uh, move to the next difficulty so that's what i was doing but along with this uh, in the contest what was happening was let's say in a, if, if in some contest i am able to solve four problems so if i look at the solution for the fifth problem it wasn't something new like it it wasn't anything that i didn't already know it was just uh, a a way to apply all the things that i already know but i wasn't able to come up with it but other people are able to do it so this really bothered me because why am why am i not able to do it if i know all the things that are required to do it so i eventually realized that i was not intelligent enough and that was my biggest challenge so that was my biggest challenge in this journey when i realized that i'm not intelligent enough to go beyond this level so what do i do how do i become more intelligent because uh, after one point you need to be really intelligent you need to be uh, very quick in thinking the solutions you need to be able to think very very deeply so uh, i wasn't that intelligent so what did i do so i started using my brain a lot more i started exercising it and by a lot more i mean that around at least 80 to 85% of my entire waking time i used to uh, use my brain for cp so now that doesn't mean that i was sitting in front of my laptop all day uh, it, it it actually means that even when i'm not in front of my laptop i'm still thinking about some problem or some concept so it's like i read a problem before i get up after uh, solving some problems i read one more problem and now if i go out for a walk or if i'm eating or if i'm doing anything i keep on thinking about that problem all day so in this way and even if i am able to solve it in my mind i will just uh, open code forces on my mobile and uh, read the next problem so so that i am thinking about something all day long so that way uh, i think that way my brain became very very good at problem solving and that's what helped me get beyond this level it wasn't by learning anything it was by uh, getting it was by using my brain a lot more so that it becomes smarter and yeah so that's how i was uh, able to do really well uh, in some of the contests and i became international master on code forces uh, which was around india top 10 at that time so yeah so i was uh, india top 10 and the journey from top 10 to top 1 was uh, way more difficult than the journey from the beginning to the top 10 so yeah and at this point i started taking things like a challenge like like if there is any hard problem or any hard concept so i would take it like a challenge like i have to understand it anyhow right so this is a challenge to me now so i remember there was a blog by uh, mifa favo and it was a very hard blog like i wasn't able to understand any single sentence from that blog it was so hard but uh, i took it up like a challenge like i have to understand it anyhow so i went to such great lengths i even I even downloaded a maths book, so not a programming related book. I downloaded a maths book and I read like hundreds of pages from that book just so that I could be able to understand whatever is written in the blog. So I still wasn't able to understand much of it, but at least I understood like one or two problems from there. So I was kind of satisfied then. But yeah, so I so the point is I used to take things like a challenge, like okay, so if this is a hard problem, I have to do it. if this is a hard concept i have to learn it so like this i used to take things like up like a challenge and uh, really helped me improve a lot and uh, yeah so at that point uh, i also won the first prize in a code chef long challenge that was also very great i won uh, 400 dollars for that contest june long challenge 
and that's when i think i think that's when my family recognized that okay the, that uh, my son is not uh, is not just wasting time he actually does something and uh, you know like like they don't understand what it means to uh, be good at coding or anything like they see the actual actual outcome right so when they saw the money that i won they understood okay he's doing something so that that was good and then uh, the internship season came in my college so i had to prepare for that i had to take a small break from competitive programming because i had to learn cs fundamentals also um, dsa i already knew because of cp so yeah uh, i did that and then i was able to get an internship from multiple companies i chose uber finally uh, and yeah then i started uh, doing cp again so um, yeah kept on practicing in the similar way uh 100 problems of each difficulty and i was reading almost any tutorial blog if i am able to find on code forces on or on the internet anywhere i just used to read it kind of out of curiosity so i wasn't even in it for the ratings I, i'm just like okay let's just i was just curious like okay let's learn this thing as well so that way finally i was able to reach the red level on code forces which is the uh, grandmaster level so you can you can kind of compare it to a chess grandmaster um, i don't know how uh, which one is harder but still you, you can uh, com- you can call it like a coding grandmaster so i was able to reach that level i was very 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 happy that way i mean i was very happy that entire month i think so yeah so that was one of the happiest moments of my life and uh, after that uh, after that it was all kind of similar just keep on practicing keep on learning and uh, a lot of effort was required i used to uh, i used to be indulged in cp or cp related discussions on discord all day and uh, i used to like a lot of times do well with some of the other uh, people who are very good at uh, competitive programming so this way i kept on getting better and better and uh, by the time uh, by the time i reach august 2021 um i was top 5 in india but at this point i i don't know what hit me but i decided to quit competitive programming because i felt like i was becoming a huge nerd i used to spend 80 to 85% of my waking time uh, towards competitive programming so uh, it felt like uh, i'm not doing anything else i don't have any hobbies and getting very distant from all my friends i'm getting distant from my family my social life in general so i thought maybe i should take a break but i called it a quit i don't know if it's a quit or a break maybe i might um, start again some day but yeah so at that time i stopped and i started doing some other things like i watched netflix a lot i um, like I, there wasn't much for me to study it's not like i am going to study anything else after doing cp like my career was kind of set by now so i just wanted to have more fun like and i considered it like a task like okay having fun is also important so i started doing that uh, so yeah that also worked pretty well and uh, yeah so after i actually quit competitive programming that's when the benefits started to show up so i got contacted by google and they wanted to uh, like i got contacted by google and i was able to clear all the interviews but uh, without any preparation so i got an offer from there i also got another offer that i'm not going to talk about right now and that's much better than the google one so yeah uh, that also mainly because of competitive programming and then uh, and then now i became india rank 1 so that happened because uh, when i when i quit i was actually india rank 4 but in the next few contests the people the three people who were above me they messed up one contest or the other and they all fell down so now because of them because they messed up i am india rank 1 now so yes so that also feels kind of good and uh, i took that opportunity to make this video and i think yeah so that's my entire journey um could have gone in much more detail but uh, i was I, i tried to keep keep it concise and yeah thank you for watching if you want to learn about competitive programming if you want to learn the various algorithms and the various data structures etc you can subscribe to my channel because that's what i do on this channel and thank you for watching